Hello everyone. It's my pleasure to invite you to this episode with Nishchal Shetty, CEO of Bazirex, on his behind the scenes journey as a founder and leader. Thank you Nishchal for uh, joining us. I appreciate you taking the time to share your learnings and uh, lessons uh, with uh, everyone. Thanks uh, thanks for having me on the show Vani. Uh, pleasure to be here. Nishchal you have built many products. I've always thought of you as a product first guy and uh, you know as you've built many products you have seen changes in technologies, changes in regulation. How do you navigate the vision and map that to you know identify uh, trends and challenges and continue to evolve your vision um so you know you rightly said i when i started my first company crowdfire i uh, took a product first approach and uh, you know that's some that's some of the learnings i got online from mm-hmm. reading about all the great companies that were being built um but over time what i realized is like uh, even if you have a great product and uh, you know you don't have a way to get it out to the hands of the people uh, failure is more or less imminent so what i did with my second startup wazirex was uh, focus on marketing first like uh, be uh, more driven in terms of how do you take this to the hands of the people rather than uh, think just about the product uh, but coming to how how do you choose the right market uh, i think over the years now building these products i've realized like you need to try to play to your strengths you know the strength of us let's say entrepreneurs in india is uh, more or less uh, focusing on solutions for the indian market uh, because that just is uh, you're just so close to the problems around you that no one would know it better than you to solve it uh, compared to global products what happens is that's a lot of uh, disconnect in the you know in the kind of audiences that exist globally this time when i start started the second product i played to my strength of being in india and seeing what the indian audiences wanted and uh, as, for some reason crypto happened to be one of those things that i picked up uh, but it could be anything my idea was i would do something for the indian market and mm-hmm. that's how i went about you know uh, playing to my strength of being in india and an entrepreneur here mm-hmm. so yeah that's how uh, i ended up with wazirex and uh, i could see the speed and the you know way i could go, grow fast like what took me 5 6 years in my first product took me about 18 months from launch to acquisition mm-hmm. so yeah i think playing to your strength is something that i think everyone should do in india as entrepreneurs and nishchal a lot gets said about first mover advantage but wazirex wasn't a first mover necessarily so what are your thoughts on how to still succeed which you have even if you're not the first mover what does it take yeah see i think uh, so there are both pros and cons of being the uh, uh, last to the market i think one of the con is uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, i would say expectations from the market because the market's already used a lot of products so uh, one of the things that is very important is that your product is already on par or better than the existing solutions which means it's going to take longer to launch uh, so compared to my first product where it was more or less innovative no one had a solution i built it in 4 days and i launched it but this second product it took me 3 months to build uh, slowly steadily understanding what the existing solutions were and we launched but i did not want to like you know stay back so what i did was uh, i started marketing early before even going to market i spoke about it first and then the launch happened and i could do this because i knew there was a market already there were uh, products already being used so there was an audience so i didn't have to do any of the hard work of you know trying to tell people this is useful uh, mm-hmm. when we finally launched i saw the uh, usefulness of being the last to market was that uh, i didn't have to sell the product to people uh, mm-hmm. they knew they were already using it all they all i had to do was build the product to be better and uh, when i say product i think one of the things i've learned is product does not only mean the product product like you know what your app is or your website uh, it's a combination of your pr- website your uh, uh, marketing your uh, the way you communicate with people as a founder so i i looked for cracks in the market uh, and the easiest way was uh, let's say in in our sector if i was to localize it to the crypto industry in india uh back then before we launched none of the mobile apps had a rating of more than 3.7 i think that was the top rating in the in the ecosystem a uh, clear indicator that uh, people were not happy with the solution then i used to look at all the founders uh, and their twitter feed and i could see that a lot of people were complaining all the time so that gave me an uh, understanding that the market is still open 
you know then there are some market like say for example search when you think about google search you know it's a solved problem now you cannot really easily compete there but then there are sectors where there might be 10 20 players but you still see discontent in the people in the users and i saw that discontent in the crypto ec- ecosystem mm. and which is what motivated me to say that i probably can build better Uh, before this i used to think of this content as being saying these two features don't exist uh, mm-hmm. i will build that and i'll probably beat this player but i don't believe it's about you know what features don't exist or uh, mm-hmm. how you can build it better just look at the people who are using the product if there is a large discontent i think you can build and uh, beat the players uh, mm-hmm. so i look for discontent in the existing audience if you think about um, pivots right and you know a lot of founders uh, and you uh engage a lot with the startup ecosystem perhaps many startups fail because they don't identify that they need to pivot and they don't do it um quickly enough right and i can understand why because it's really difficult to let go and say now i'm going to do something else but you seem to have uh you know managed pivots very easily is that uh, was that easy for you or just appears easy what's your suggestion and advice on how to go about pivoting one's uh, business and why and when see i think uh, pivots are never easy um, I, neither from a uh, entrepreneur's personal point of view nor from your team see what happens is as an entrepreneur you are uh, you know showing this amazing journey forward uh, this amazing story of how you will win the market uh, with the product you have motivated your team your investors everyone around you including yourself and then one fine day you realize that maybe this is not the way forward uh, maybe we have to take a different path uh, then going back to people you know first i think the first uh, thing you have to understand is you will look like a fool and may- maybe that's where most of the founders uh, probably w- don't want to be so i think one thing i've done is let my ego be aside when i'm building companies it's not me building it's just you know one of the many pro- who are uh, building something so it's not initial for me so when i see failure i i want to accept it i want to uh, you know tell everyone that maybe i was wrong and that's a better path and uh, then steering everyone in that direction is probably the hardest once you have first mentally made up your own mind um, and i've seen that time and again but then i realize uh, it's just that temporary movement because after that when things go right everyone realizes that it was all in done in the uh, you know the right intentions so yeah i think uh, that's a temporary point in time where uh, it will be the hardest for you to take that decision uh, but you know how do you take this decision is very simple uh, get your emotion aside and just keep some targets for you i've always done that for myself that in the next 3 months or 6 months this is the metric i want to achieve and if i'm able to achieve even 70 to 80% of the metric i think we are probably on the right path uh, but when your metrics are let's say 10 20 30% of your expectation uh, it's pretty clear because after that you are just going to then go ahead with hope and uh, i've tried to avoid hope in uh, all of these uh, you know successes that i've had it's always a metric driven approach so uh, that's how uh, it become easier for me uh, the metrics don't lie so uh, you know you, it's time to change when things don't go in the right way no i think that's uh, uh, great and uh, uh, you know i think any successful company in fact if you dwell into it uh, they somewhere had to make some hard uh, pivots that may or may not today be as obvious but i can't really think of a company that had a straight line success uh, from their original idea those are rare but that leads me to another question around monetization and other sort of uh, you know holy cow kind of a topic because people belong into different uh, ideas on that uh, you have always built very capital efficient businesses and focused on monetization from the beginning so talk about that see you know for me it's uh, it's never been like i never set out saying mm-hmm. i will build a capital efficient company or uh, you know uh, for me i think the situations have demanded it when i started out uh, this was the early day uh, where in india as well uh, you know funding was not really that uh, abundant the way it is today it's easier um, and uh, i think i was a single developer sitting in my um, you know room deciding what to build and uh, it just came naturally to me that uh, if you do not have uh, revenues you are not able to grow and uh, that's how i took the first approach uh, to uh, building monetization into the product early on and if your core is going to be about uh, giving a particular service for which you can charge people i think you should charge early uh, rather than charge too late 
because that even if you want to charge less but charge early because you know that this is the uh, core of your product that people have to pay to use it and this was not where i was changing human behavior this has been happening for a long time people are paying for uh, uh, financial services people are paying for uh, saas was always 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 a thing so uh, i never innovated in that aspect and i don't intend to innovate when i build a company in terms of whether it should be a paid product or a, a free product uh, and i think that's how decision should be made for entrepreneurs if you are in a market where let's say you are going to be more content oriented as a product uh mm-hmm. if you charge you will be uh, you know getting a, uh, blocking your growth and that's trying to change human behavior i'm not going to pay for uh, reading something online um mm-hmm. which is why so many of the paid online content experiments have been failures uh, mm-hmm. so so i think don't try to change behavior when it comes to monetizing your product most founders don't uh, build in a regulatory uncertain environment and in your case you had great progress and then the crypto ban happened how did you uh, and and of course you have gone past that so how did you work through that from your own uh, self motivation and designing a new strategy and also keeping your team uh, engaged uh, through the short term uh, you know tough uh, if you will uh so i'll be very candid out here you know i did not think about regulation when i got into uh, the whole crypto thing uh it was thrown to me after i think 3 weeks since we after we launched the whole banking ban in india came about for the crypto thing and uh, i'm not one to give up just because uh, regulations uh, you know dictate otherwise um i knew that if it is legal in india to do i would do it and uh, now when i look back on hindsight i see a lot of these uh, large businesses uh, have sort of bi- built around the absence of regulation being an advantage rather than a disadvantage uh i think uber ola and your uh, airbnb are some great examples where in their parallel offline industry there are regulations but they can exist without regulations and uh, when this whole uh, episode happened in back in 2018 of the rbi banking ban i realized we had that opportunity to build something in parallel without so we were not breaking law and that is very important i think there are two things you know one is you are uh, in an unregulated market the other is you are breaking the law i think breaking the law is something that you should never mm-hmm. attempt but you know being around it uh, being close to the vicinity of uh, you know something where uh, there is a gray area i think that's a great area to be uh, in a progressive industry because when regulations come you will be one of those early movers who will get to be part of that regulated environment team definitely was uh, in the b- beginning was demotivated but uh, these examples of uh, ex- large businesses being built is what i actually gave to the team i told them look at uber ola if they did not uh, try to build a better uh, you know transport system uh, worrying about not having licenses for mm-hmm. operating in cities uh, mm-hmm. people would not have had a better life right now for travel mm-hmm. uh, so that kept us going and uh, it we took it one day at a time we because uh, there was question in india will th- will there be a complete ban on the market mm-hmm. and this was all hearsay and i said that nobody really knows uh, so why right, try to preempt that uh because i saw some of my competitors leaving the market going away uh in anticipation that this will get worse uh mm. but we stuck around and uh it turned out to be well so i think it it was a good decision when founders think about mna uh selling their business or working within the structure of a larger business um there's all kinds of emotion versus logic logically we can come to the right or wrong answer but emotionally it becomes very difficult to um take that step and uh, uh, many times a business that could have had better value uh you know loses out because of that and again one more area you seem to have sassed without too much trouble or turmoil so what are your thoughts on how founders should approach m&a in our case for example i can only speak for my experiences my my motivation was uh, how can i scale faster um you know in a in a direction where i want to take the company and uh, when i uh, started speaking to binance which is a company that acquired uh, our exchange uh, i realized that they've done this faster than uh, what we've been able to achieve uh, and the the rapid scaling that they were experiencing was something that i wanted to closely experience um, and i realized that being 
getting acquired by them will help me apply the same principle the same learnings and also get access to a lot of uh, knowledge crypto is very nascent in india not a lot of people understand it not a lot of um, you know n- knowledge about it so i wanted to be with someone who's seen more than me who knows it who's done it and this seemed like the perfect fit for me uh, so i did not go with the approach of uh, let's make some money let's sell it let's relax but how can i grow 10x and uh, seems to be uh, like a good decision because now we have been able to like expedite our growth uh, thanks to a lot of learnings from them and a lot of help from the uh, acquiring company so i think uh, that was my motivation hyperscaling uh, some some want to go and raise money for that some want to get acquired whatever it is like you can see instagram for example uh, the while they scaled on their own but i think uh, they achieved 20 30x after they got acquired and uh, facebook added fuel to the fire um, mm. that's the same thing i saw with uh, binance acquiring us mm. and it's been going great now so yeah mm. i think it was it was just a motivation to grow nothing else and nichol when you think about founders that you respect or in suggesting your ideas on what makes a founder successful what are those 3 5 10 traits that you think uh, you know makes founders successful uh i think the first thing is uh, founders who know how to you know get the word out to the right people you know i realize that founders who are very upfront about being vocal about what they're building taking it out there to the audiences hustling i think those are qualities that are needed to succeed because you might be building the best product in the world but if you're not talking about it no one's going to care about it so that's the number one thing the other is uh, i think not micromanaging which is uh, really something that with experience founders get to understand some get it in the early days uh, for me it took some time uh, uh, and micromanagement comes because you s- s- sort of love what you're doing and you know you want everyone to do it in that way uh, but i think over time it's hard to scale that way so uh, so micromanagement and whatever related to scaling mm. which is being hands off uh, mm. i think that is something that founders should probably inculcate in themselves right mm-hmm. from the early days here in my second startup i did it from day one uh, like mm-hmm. uh, some of the things that i know i can do be- well i still don't get into it because that's not my focus area and the teams can just grow themselves so that's been the second uh, motivator i think the other thing is uh, uh, i think founders should also get mentors mentors advisors uh, so that they understand what they lack because it's very hard to look within uh to see how i can improve myself and uh you know when you talk to mentors mentors can be you know i'm 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 glad that you are helping us out so a lot of times when we have these discussions we realize that we are doing something wrong or we are not going in the right direction so you get time to reflect so being able to reflect on your uh, activities and what you're doing either through yourself or your mentors and advisors i think that's the other thing that helps founders um, really go in the right direction Mm-hmm. yeah these are few of the things um, i think key things for founders i think you've done very well in the last uh, uh, decade and or less than a decade the achievements you've had and all of the wonderful learnings you shared with us i uh, you know wish you the most success over the next decade and i'd be cheerleading and watching to see your next phases of uh, success so this has been a great episode uh, of uh, insights and uh, learnings thank you Thanks thanks a lot for having me on the show Vani uh, it's always a pleasure